And now we have Tangela. Tangela ensnared fans in the first generation. While most fans know it as part of Erika's team, its origins go back even further. In the red and blue beta, it was known as Medusa, but with a Z, revealing it was based on the famous ancient Greek Gorgon, whose head turned one to stone, except instead of tentacles, it had its famous vines. And as the years passed, Tangela got an evolution into Tangrowth, which gave it the big update it needed in generation four, with more varied inspiration drawing from shaggy cavemen and orangutans. With that said, what we're really interested in is how they performed competitively. So, how good were Tangela and Tangrowth actually? And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. If need be, you could pretty much sum up Tangela's RBYOU existence as it will never see play in a serious game because Exeggutor exists. Tangela's stats are actually not bad, and it's got access to Sleep Powder, which is amazing, and it's even got growth to boost its special. However, it can only attack with the pathetically weak Mega Drain, and it matches up badly against literally everything except Rock types, which I guess makes sense because it doesn't really have leaves, so yeah, no Razor Leaf. However, Exeggutor also answers the rocks, has the cover special typing and psychic far superior special and explosion it's hard to find a spot on red blue and yellow teams when your greatest competition is one of the most mandatory pokemon in the metagame hell even victory bell is sometimes used as an alternative tangela sadly just doesn't bring anything to the table it exists in underuse which is far more than could be said for it in overuse so there's that at least and on to the second generation, Tangela unfortunately didn't get much help there. Because of course, it was one of the worst casualties of the special split, losing a massive 120 points in special defense. Even if this hadn't been the case though, it probably wouldn't be too significant, except for maybe an underuse. It cannot be emphasized enough how there is legitimately nothing Tangela does. Exeggutor continued to thrive, and Meganium and Jumpluff now existed within the OU sphere as well. Although they were significantly less common, especially the latter. Even Venusaur would be a better choice now, thanks to its fighting resistance, helping against Machamp. Tangela simply cannot do anything other grass types can't do much better, and would mostly only serve to hinder its team. It gained Giga Drain, but so did everything else, and that's still not a particularly great move. Meganium uses Razor Leaf instead, for example, and Jumpluff doesn't even bother with an attacking move most of the time. While Exeggutor could take it or leave it, it can't even do anything notable and underused, where Scyther and Electabuzz, among other things, just destroy it. It also has no pressure exertion or threat stopping to note whatsoever. And because of all this, it dropped to never used, where it's finally somewhat decent as a niche in that metagame. But that's it, such is life. And now on to advanced. For Tangela, you can totally forget any third gen overuse or underuse viability thanks to its typing, stats, and move pull, as they are just not up to snuff. Whether it's the land of Tyranitar, Skarmory, and Zapdos, or Kangaskhan, Hypno, and Amistar, Tangela is just out of place with nothing to contribute. However, our Viney friend has a happy little niche in the fun, albeit niche metagame of advanced never use. It's able to use chlorophyll effectively and thus pulls off a mean sunny day and solar beam set. Backed by a boosted hidden power fire and either sleep powder for setup or morning sun for powerful recovery. It's in this tier that the power level is finally such that its bulk is sufficient to stave the threats off and that the bulk of the opposing Pokemon isn't such to where it struggles to harm them back. In the land where there are plenty of Hitmonchans, Raticates, and Pupitars to wall, Tangela will continue to thrive as it can finally effectively use its great resistances and bulk without its other flaws overshadowing it. Now finally, in Generation 4, Tangrowth was gifted an evolution, packing some excellent stats. However, it failed to keep up with the hard-hitting offense in DPP thanks to its lack of a reliable recovery. While it was possibly the hardest Gyarados counter except for maybe Porygon 2, it certainly wouldn't be able to counter anything after taking a few hits from it when factoring in the ever-common Stealth Rock and Sandstorm. Plus, apart from the great Earthquake resistance, its typing wasn't helping since it didn't resist other common physical attacking types such as fighting, which is huge since close combats are everywhere, and Tyranitar stabs for example. And when Platinum came around, Scizor was everywhere, which pushed Tangrowth further and further out, and unfortunately it's just not seen at all in overuse. However, Tangrowth was an excellent physical walling option in underuse. All grass types must compete with Venusaur in this tier, but its obscene bulk and ground resistance won out as the choice for walling for Alligator, Rhyperior, Absol, Torterra, and physical variants of Toxicroak, and Altaria and more on many stalls teams. Its offensive stats and solid move pool allowed it to pack a punch in return, unlike some of its fellow underused walls such as Spiritomb, Chansey, and Registeel. This alongside Chlorophyll led to the occasional existence of some offensive stats, but by and large Tangrowth was a defensive Pokemon and it thrived at that. 
Now in the weather generation, Tangrowth gained one of the best ability in Pokemon history that completely offset any of its faults and made it an absolutely monstrous, unkillable physical tank. That ability, of course, is Regenerator. In the days of the physical threats such as Excadrill, Landorus, Terrakion, Garchomp, and Dragonite, with Gliscor to shut them down while remaining a threat to sweep itself, Tangrowth stood in their way, unwavering and smacking them back, in addition to abusing Black and White's brutal sleep mechanics. With the buffed Giga Drain and a propensity for spamming Leech Seed, it had absolutely no issue staying healthy throughout a game to make sure that, no matter what, your team was not going to be swept by those physical monstrosities. However, its popularity did waver come Black and White 2, when the emphasis was more on special threats, especially Keldeo, and a new existence of another Regenerator Grass type who actually had special defense, a better sleep move in Spore. However, Tangro's physical tanking abilities are second to none. It's even been referred to as a physical Blissey. So whenever people get tired of Garchomp blowing their Amoonguses away, they find another way to deal with Keldeo and give Tangrowth a try. And it does perform too, especially with new age tricks such as Knockoff to stick it to defensive teams as well. And even though Tangrowth is technically rarely used, it's definitely a contender in the higher tiers, thanks to what was previously mentioned. And as for Tangela, Eviolite made it incredibly bulky on the physical side, and it could take a special hit too, but barely still. This gave it some odd NU usage, being able to basically infinitely wall Kangaskhan and deal with other threats such as Golurk and Samurott. Now on to Gen 6, the gifts actually just kept coming, as with Tangro's good offensive stats and move pull, Assault Vest was a perfect fit for a Regenerator Pokemon, and thus it was able to check even more Pokemon by becoming a special tank, something previously thought was laughable for Tangro. It was able to wither incredibly strong hits from things such as Keldeo and Thunderous while being no slouch on the physical side, thus still assisting against Garchomp-esque threats, although without investment it was significantly less impossible to break on that side. Regardless, this mixed wall ability was just what the doctor ordered in terms of giving teams ability to play around a plethora of problematic Pokemon in just one slot. It could do what was previously unthinkable and stay on Heat Ran to earthquake it into dust, regenerating off the damage after it switched out. During the height of Mega Altaria's dominance, it was one of the few Pokemon not totally terrified by it and thus commonly ran Sludge Bomb. The buffed knockoff was good against everything, especially Ferrothorn, Amoongus, and Heat Ran, but most notably meant Clefable wasn't coming in totally scot-free either. Rocky Helmet sets became popular as well for teams that wanted total physical walling potential, when monsters such as Bisharp and Mega Metagross needed to be stopped. In fact, its physical bulk is so high that it has a significant chance of surviving Mega Charizard X's Flare Blitz after a Stealth Rock. The new mechanics change of not being able to sleep opposing grass types anymore was both good and bad though. This meant it was more easily absorbed by opposing teams, but it also meant that it could absorb them from others as well. However, despite all this, overall it was never top of the usage stash, which reflected the way it tended to perform less than consistently over a longer period of time, and it was never good at all against popular defensive teams, but it was quite a fine Pokemon worth considering for any offensive or balanced team in need of some backbone on either side of the spectrum. And with this, Tangrowth is most definitely overused in Gen 6. And in Sun and Moon, both variants of Tangrowth shine brighter than ever in the new generation, climbing the viability rankings and the usage stats with ease. Mega Metagross was the king of the early metagame, while Zygarde and Tapu Bulu were making their mark as well, and thus the Rocky Helmet set was an amazing counter. But Magirna, Tapu Koko, and Ash Greninja were also majorly problematic, and thus Tangrowth's mixed tank assault vest capabilities were in higher demand than ever, as it successfully walled a much larger portion of the metagame now. In fact, its usage has been high ever since the beginning of Sun and Moon, as has its place in the viability ranking. While sometimes it does fluctuate, and other times it's too popular for its own good, meaning it has a tendency to get lured, it's a significant part of the metagame that is near immovable in the face of many incredibly dangerous threats. It's a common sight on offensive teams thanks to its great synergy with top metagame threat Heatran and its ability to stuff Celesteela's Leech Seed while not fearing its attack and threatening a knockoff back and thus enabling a ton of dangerous Pokemon such as Mega Latios and Mega Alakazam. Overall, Sun and Moon Tangrowth lets offense function by giving it a backbone that isn't a complete blob and it's likely to continue this way for the foreseeable future. So for now, it's most definitely overused. And I'm sure a lot of you may have noticed that we haven't mentioned VGC at all until now. That's because we could not find any notable placements for Tangrowth whatsoever for the past 8 years. This is probably because in the doubles meta specifically, it's just outclassed as a grass type by like almost everything, both offensively and defensively, especially since the other grass types tend to offer things more than just the mono grass typing. Also, it's abysmal special defense sure doesn't help either. In 2010, it was outclassed by Abomasnow, which was huge in the land of Kyogre 
In 2012, it was outclassed by Amoongus and Virizion, the former having more resistances and a better special defense, while the latter was a fast offensive threat, again with decent bulk. In 2013, Breloom took Virizion's place, minus the bulk and speed but with sleep, excellent priority and stronger offense. In 2014, Breloom disappeared but was replaced by Ludicolo and Ferrothorn, to which Ferrothorn is Ferrothorn and it's got that steel typing and leech seed. In 2015, Virizion re-added itself to this list along with the previously mentioned Pokemon. 2016's uber laden metagame was pretty much Ferrothorn and Amoongus, but the sparser quantity of Pokemon that outclassed Tangrowth didn't change the fact that they were giants of the meta. In 2017, the new kings of Tapu Bulu and Kartana took the stage, the former of course being some of the best team support in the entire game, while remaining an offensive option and reaping the benefits of its excellent part fairy typing, and the latter was a terrifying threat that also packed its half steel typing. And finally, in 2018, Serena added itself to this list, and Ferrothorn re-emerged as well. So as you can see over the years, Tangrowth was never short on competition, but it was always short on ways to combat it. Say la vie. And that's it, so how good were Tangela and Tangrowth actually? Well, it most definitely had very rough beginnings as Tangela, but it's only improved since becoming Tangrowth. In every generation of overuse, its viability has vital parts of the metagame that hold it together against terrifying threats, and it definitely must be accounted for. Unfortunately though, in VGC, the more specialized doubles metagame was significantly less conducive to its talents, and thus it's never seen the light of day. I guess it's kind of similar to Skarmory being good in singles but not in doubles, since its kit is just more suited for singles. Anyways, overall though, while Tangela was among the most forgettable Pokemon in existence, once it evolved, it became a damn important pick. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, yada, yada, yada. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.